Hi everybody, it's Sandra from the Funky Pickle Thrifter. So I went to kind of a great auction and I thought I would take you guys along with me to see what we see. There's some beautiful pink depression glass. That's a really pretty radio. That's probably Bakelite. Now I did buy a few things. When we get to something that I bought, I'm going to cut in and show that to you. A lot of really great stuff. Those were kind of cool. That'd be great for a man cave or something. Now I noticed on replay that I was just moving too fast. I was so excited and I just was going a little bit crazy. So the video looked really awful. So I did slow it down. If you're thinking that it looks a little bit weird, it is sort of slow motion. I'm always looking for stuff to sell on eBay for a profit. So some things I know about, some things I don't know about. I like selling patches sometimes, but I was not really sure about these. Kind of interesting though, some Boy Scout stuff. Those are definitely collectible items. That's some sort of a beautiful crystal topper, I guess, to something. I don't know what. I don't really know much about old toys. It depends. I didn't know anything about those, that's for sure. Here's an old spittoon that they actually make me ill. I can't stand when I see spittoons. I think it's absolutely disgusting, but that's what that was. There's an old tackle box. Tackle boxes and lures are very collectible. I don't know what was in there really, but I kind of make the assumption when I'm at an auction that some of these people who are selling their items already picked out all the good stuff. So I have to be careful if I really don't know what I'm doing, you know. Unlike a yard sale where maybe people don't sort of know kind of thing. I love old newspapers like this. These were good and old. These were from the 1910s. In really nice condition too. I really do love ephemera like this. I don't know if there's much of a uh, market for newspapers. I always have a hard time selling old newspapers, so I didn't get them, and I was really fighting <laughs> the urge to get them. I just wanted to read them and go through them, but gosh, I don't have any room, and I also don't have any time, so I didn't get them. I love old children's books, too. The illustrations and everything are beautiful. These dolls are very interesting. Believe it or not, they're Madame Alexander, or at least one of the boxes is. These are some Skokum dolls. Yeah, there's the other ones <laughs> in the original boxes. Those are really awesome. Kind of a nice thing, right? No, well, these dolls don't have a lot of value. They're sort of cheap plastic dolls. That one's beautiful. That one's newer, obviously. How cute is that? I think that says Patricia Rose. I don't know what that is. Yeah, they had some weird artwork. Here's some linens. A lot of people collect linens. I love them, actually. I'm just going to leaf through and see if there's anything jumping out at me. The records I didn't even bother with. I know those have been picked over. The, uh, the guy, guys especially, are all over the records, so I didn't even think I had a chance. I didn't know what that was. It said Stickly, so that's a name that I know, but I think that was just flatware. Look at those pretty pink dishes. Unusual stuff, right? I bet you those political posters aren't worth very much. I think a lot of people got them and kept them. The green bowl's beautiful. Here's some more New York Times. Uh, these are all Kennedy related. So these don't have a lot of value because a lot of people kept them. I think the one that does have value is the one from Dallas. And these are beautiful Ed Edison cylinders. I actually have a box of these. I've sold these in the past. I didn't have time to get these. Um, I don't have time to sell them, but they had four large boxes they sold for $10 a box. There is a lot of money right there to be made, but something that I just didn't have time for. 
and the blue ones are particularly wanted. There was actually a sky blue one that I had never seen before. And th those things are, um, what are those? Uh, they're not the view masters. They're like the precursor to that, the stereo, is that called a stereogram viewer thing or something? I can't remember. I have sold some of those cards though, those things you put in the, the end there and then it looks like 3D pictures. Oh, that's pretty. Look at all those nice little things. Sir Walter Raleigh in a can. Better let him out. <laughs> Remember that old chestnut? Oh, pretty old stuff. I think that might be Helen Keller and her teacher. Uh, not sure. All right, so here are some jewels. They had a lot of jewelry, a lot of gold. I've had that one before. That one is by JJ. Not old, only made to kind of look old and funky. And here's some stuff, not silver, but some stuff looked old, some stuff didn't. I probably should have gotten that box right there that had some cool turtles in it, some cool brooches. Now, there's a lot of sterling right here, and I'm trying to just look at anything that jumps out, anything that's super unusual, very unique, very interesting, very heavy, maybe just designed in an extra special way. I like that pendant right there, but that was not gold, so that's why I didn't get that. I don't know if you see that in, in that bag with a little cameo. Definitely pretty stuff. There's some heavy, heavy silver in there, but see how nothing is really like great because these are not gonna go for cheap prices. I mean, they didn't go for cheap prices. So I had to really make sure that if I bought anything that, well, either A, I was just gonna keep it, or B, it was gonna be something I could make a profit on. And that's not anything that I can really see here too much. That charm bracelet I was very interested in until I realized it wasn't silver. You can see it says 3.4 ounces on it. So I thought that was interesting and then <laughs> yeah, I had to ask the, the girl to take it out for me. So we're going to take a look at that right here. A lot of really big, very interesting charms. Look at the, the bee or the fly or whatever it is. It's old fashioned looking. I don't think it was legitimately old. I uh, could be wrong, but it just sort of looked like not. And it wasn't silver. I don't think this sold for very much either. Yeah, too bad that wasn't silver. If that was silver, I definitely would have been interested in that. Now that's very pretty too. That's a sterling silver sword brooch and matching earrings. So there I am <laughs> pointing, pointing to it. I think the girl takes that one out for me too. That's interesting, that mirror right there. So the bag clearly states sterling silver, but I don't think it is actually. So that makes me kind of unhappy, but that's my fault. Buyer beware, I should have taken a closer look. I think it is only plated, but that's okay. I still really like that mirror. We're gonna actually take a look at that right now. I bought this mirror. So what do I know about old steamships or about old sterling silver collectible items that aren't jewelry? Uh, nothing, actually. I bought this one just on pure instinct. First of all, it was $25, so there's that. Not a lot of money. Now, I don't know a lot about this ship other than I think it set sail in 1906. This is probably from the 20s or so. It was also used in World War I, this ship. And the mirror's weird because it like makes everything look really small. It's sort of like a circus mirror. This is a very, very interesting item. So I couldn't find anything like it anywhere on the internet. So the problem with something like this, well, it's not a problem, but I think one thing that may be uh, an issue with selling this is who really collects like this particular ship? Probably nobody because it wasn't in service for very many years. How do you say that? Belsenland? Not sure. 
Um, but yeah, it's sort of like uh, something that probably people don't collect, you know, things from this particular ship. So this is going to be really exciting for me to try to figure out, you know, exactly what this is. This obviously must have been for first class passengers or um, I don't know. Did they have gift shops on ships in those days? You think somebody bought this? I doubt it, right? Don't know. This is a very, very beautiful item, however, and I'm really excited to have it. All right, now we are back at the auction. There's a sterling silver sword. I thought that was very cool. I like that one very much. I think it just says sterling on it. And it came with those earrings. Uh, is that a matching set? I guess so. Looks a little bit different, but I didn't see a maker's marker or anything like that. So this one I was really interested in. This is an early Trafari. And it looks like something Cleopatra or something would wear. It's very exotic looking. That is the bracelet, I think. But here's the necklace. Beautifully made, you know, as Trafari always is. I really wanted this a lot. It comes with the earrings, too. There's my mom's hand. <laughs> she went with me. She actually bought something, too. I'll try to get her on camera on the end to show you what she bought. She was so excited. She was like a little kid. Very exciting. That is not the original box. That is a very cool jewelry store box, but that's not a Trafari box. Yeah, I am all about that, and I did buy it. So here it is. I'm so happy I have this set isn't that beautiful this is not in perfect condition there are some missing stones here and there not too terribly bad so i believe this dates from uh well it has to be at least from 39 i don't think it can be older than 39 and i think this is younger than 55 and i can tell that because of the markings on it it is a crown trafari and it does say patent penned so we'll take a look at that I think this has a real Egyptian look to it. I can't find a comp. I don't know. I can't find anything about it. Um, but I love it. And it's handy that it comes with the bracelet. Now, this bracelet is in excellent, excellent condition. It's beautifully articulated. Trafari was certainly really a, a cut above their competitors. Look at how nice that is. It moves wonderfully. So let's take a look at the mark here. There it is. So that is a crown trafari and then it says pat penned. And I think this is beautiful. Now, all of the jewelry was getting bid up really, really high by a lot of people in the room. Like just really stupid. They had a lot of gold. I didn't even bother looking at any of it. Didn't look old enough to me. Look at these earrings too, by the way. Look at the closure. Isn't that neat? I have never seen earrings like that ever with this kind of closure. You may have, but I never have. And they're very comfortable too. Of course, every piece is marked. Trafari is always marked. Trafari did not do unmarked pieces. But anyway, I'm at this auction. Everything is getting bid like stupid amounts, much higher in a lot of instances than it's worth. And so when the Trafari comes up, I'm thinking, all right, well, let's see who knows what's going on in this room. Let's see if anybody else is interested in this early Trafari Perur. And none of the usual suspects were bidding, except for one woman. She hadn't bid all night and she started bidding against me. I did pay up for this and I'd rather not say what I paid for this. Uh, but I thought, let me put it this way. I thought the price was very good and... Then I knew that there was another piece of Trafari coming up and I said to myself, I'm probably going to get a great bargain on this because nobody else really knows about this Trafari stuff except for this one woman and she's probably not going to be interested in this little piece, but she was. So <laughs> let's have a look at the thing that I'm really most excited about. This is my favorite purchase of the night. Here it is in the case. Look at that pretty little thing. 
My mom's going to take it out of the box for me. I love this little brooch. Isn't this lovely? These are cabochon stones. First of all, I love the combination of the green and the blue. I believe the patent for this item was applied for in 1949. This is designed by Alfred Philippe. And there's the crown tafari with a copyright symbol. Isn't this nice? I love these cabochon stones. Now, I'm not sure if this was part of their mogul collection. I can't really find a lot of information on this. I only see this being sold um, maybe three or four times in the last 10 years on the internet. But, um, you know, I could be wrong about that. I mean, I didn't really like scour the whole thing. <laughs> but um, sadly, it is missing this little stone right here which is very unfortunate, but I do have an old Trafari brooch that is just sort of shot that I'm going to use that I kind of have been using here and there for parts and for stones. And I do think I have that size stone, which is nice that it will come out of a Trafari item as well. Don't you love that? So I don't know. I probably spent a little bit <laughs> too much on it, but I just really, really did want it. And yeah, that other wo woman wanted it too, but I guess I wanted it a little bit more badly than her. It's just so rarely seen, and I think it's just absolutely beautiful. Don't forget to tell me what your favorite pieces are, by the way, that I got, or, or even your favorite pieces that you're seeing in the auction. I love this. Here we are, taking more of a look at some stuff here. Those pocket watches went for a ton. I'm not even going to show the real gold. There was nothing very interesting. Uh, and like I said, I knew it was all going to go way high, and it did. Oh, I wanted to see that ring. I didn't buy it, and now I kind of regret it. It said Navajo on the bag, but I mean, who says that? I don't think it is. That went for $65. Oh, no, I should have bought this one. Look at this garnet one. I think this one went for 70 or so, 65 70 But... I didn't think it was that old. I wasn't really sure. Uh, I regret it. This is really the one I like the best, but it didn't fit me, so. Oh, well. Here are some lots with uh, not too much interesting stuff to me. Just sort of a lot of common stuff. Colorful, definitely fun for somebody, for sure, right? And I'm sure somebody got a lot of pleasure out of wearing these. But as a reseller, you know, I don't really see anything special enough. That's all. And I don't know what that is. Oh, I see. Stamps. Okay. I don't know a thing about stamps. There's some more stuff. I was going to open that because it was Department 56 and then I saw it was a keychain. That's that same box we already looked at before. That's interesting. A whistle and two, um, are you okay, Abby? I think <laughs> my dog is snoring over there. Those are great cigarette holders. Are those tortoise shell? Mm, not sure. I don't even remember those coming up for bid, so I don't know what those sold for. And there's those same spoons. Now, for some reason, there's a weird bracelet in there. Did I see that before? Yeah, I probably saw it before, too. Not very good camera work. Sorry. Now I'm going to see something I like. Yeah, me likey. Mm, yeah, that's my thing right there. That is killer. Let's have a look. So uh, if you've never been to an auction before, the thing that the jewelry is in is called a Riker. Uh, I've never been to an auction where you get to keep that Riker. So I had to give it back. You just take all the jewelry out of it. So everything here has some verdigris on it. We know how to remove that with vinegar. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. This is lovely, right? That's a nice old thing. I don't really care about it. I think everybody already knows which one I care about. It's going to be the same one you all care about. Uh Oh, wow. I didn't even look at the back of this. That actually has a little more age than I thought. Let's see what that says. Patent pen. Huh. Well, I've never seen hardware like this ever. Have you? 
And there's our C-clasp. It seems like that's not even metal. What is that? Okay, well, I didn't realize that that was as old as that. That's kind of cool. And then we have one of these ID bracelets. Um, nickel silver. If you don't know, nickel silver is kind of a funny misnomer because there is no silver in nickel silver. Hey, you're trying to trick us, I think. This is kind of cool, actually. Who's ever seen anything like this? I never have. I wonder if this is something that somebody did in crafts class or something. Remember these? <laughs> like in Girl Scouts, didn't we used to make dishes out of these? Like ashtrays or whatever. Ashtrays. Can you imagine modern day <laughs> having a bunch of little kids make ashtrays? I don't think that would happen. But it's kind of a curiosity. It's kind of an interesting piece, I think. And... um. This is actually very nice, too. At first, I was like, eh, I don't know about it, right? But uh, it is a Napier. And I think it's sort of weird. It's weird the way these grapes are so sort of deep deep set in there. I mean, you know, just the, the green, I mean. So it has a lot of depth. That's interesting. And this, eh, you know, not a high-end piece. Kind of got some scratches. Look at that kind of cheap <laughs> kind of gold tone right this doesn't have the kind of workmanship that we really love here is uh, a nice and inexpensive cameo this is uh, plastic for sure i think i might have this exact one actually nobody's inside so yeah don't care <laughs> these i care about these i like a lot this is a very nice thing. A little bit of loss to the gold tone. Verdigris for sure. But those are pretty. I love this pink. And here's the other, the other thing. I guess this is copper most likely. Sorry, let me zoom out a little bit. That's very pretty. Yeah, we'll, we're going to take care of all of this for sure. And then this also... This is nice. This is a dress clip. What does that say? Okay. That patent number would not help us identify that uh, this piece. That would just tell us what the patent is on this thing right here. Which I guess, I mean, it could put help you date it, you know, circuit data a little bit. But it's not going to give us the exact thing of the, the pin itself. I don't know what this is made out of. It actually feels like plaster kind of stuff. Uh, I'm not sure. It's certainly been painted gold, but that's kind of interesting. I think I paid 45 for all this, I think. But look at this loveliness. Oh, I love you. I love these little rosettes. Isn't that pretty? Nobody's in there either. Uh, this chain has a lot of wear on it too. This is actually really pretty. I mean, again, you can see the workmanship, right? Not high quality. It's pretty though. I really like this. Oh, is it signed? Who are you? Let me see. Show yourself. Um, is that Sekoro? Oh my lord. I think it does. Hmm. Uh, maybe not. I'm going to just put this to the side for a second. We're going to check that further in a minute. I don't have my loop right in front of me. So here's the matching earrings. Kind of interesting color combination. Not very good glue job. Yeah, this is the one. So a lot of times you can tell nice jewelry or nice cameos by the quality of the carving. You know, this isn't the best I've ever seen, but it's it's not the worst either. I must say, but this stuff here is exquisite verdigris. That's why all this stuff ended up in that lot. So the verdigris in this case kind of helps us because if it didn't have verdigris, maybe I wouldn't have even been able to buy it, right? Because it might've been too much money or whatever. Um, but look at this. Isn't that so cool? I've never seen that. And then it's interesting because then halfway it changes to like a different thing. 
a different link. So some of this verdigris here, uh, when we take this off, and I can we can do it together if you want, um, but when I try to take this verdigris off, which we're gonna do with vinegar and a, a soft toothbrush, sometimes when you take it off, it like you lose some of the gold tone underneath too. So I don't know if that's gonna be the case here or not. But, oh man, I just think this is really beautiful. Let me put it on my neck and let's have a look at it on the neck because I think it really is a thing of beauty. Do you love it or do you love it? How pretty. Look at that link. So interesting. And there's where it changes. I made it a little bit shorter than I think it's meant to be. But that's kind of cool. It's like an early kind of adjustable situation. This is beautiful. This is a stone cameo, by the way. I think that stone it might be shell. Hmm. I'm not sure. But I love this. And this does look like this possibly has some gold content. I am going to test this out for sure. I love that. Back to the auction. These are definitely collectible, these old Erector sets. Here's some really great old newspapers. Check that out. Scores Die in Zepp Blast. Great Hindenburg paper. Wow, look at that. Oh, what a terrible thing, right? I don't know if those are worth any money or not. I'm not sure. But somebody kept a lot of interesting newspapers. Don't have room. <laughs> I'm pointing because I was showing my mother. Cool items. I don't even remember those going up for bids, so I don't know what they sold for. Some kind of fun stuff, right? There's stamps that I know nothing about. That looked interesting. Maybe that was something really old. Not sure. Very beautiful, though. Some paperweights. Look at that nice Art Nouveau thing. It's a statue, I guess. A little. It's a little uh, uh, thing. <laughs> what is that called? I think those were Nantucket baskets right there. I think we're going to take a better look at those in a minute. Those didn't sell for very much. They sure were nice, but I don't know a thing about them. Oh, look at this cute baby. Come on. Is that the cutest baby you've seen in your life? That's adorable. I'm just showing, <laughs> showing my mother. That's a great tray. Not kind of funky enough, I didn't think. For resale, I have sold those trays before. I can't remember the name brand. Is it Soraka or something? Hmm. That was sort of interesting, I thought. Some sort of a alabaster or a marble statue. I love this weather vane. I think that is so cool. Copper. I don't have a place for it. I mean, there's not a thing I could do with it, but I really was admiring it, as you can see. There's a beautiful bowl. Silver plate right here. Oh, some pretty old buttons. I love looking through old buttons. Those are not buttons. I think those are little belt things, right, that... To, uh, you know, hold something around your waist. I mean, not necessarily a belt, but maybe it could be like a cloth thing or whatever. How colorful. I enjoyed looking at those. I think this is a gun holster. I uh, wasn't exactly sure. Yeah, fishing reels, definitely collectible. Not my area of expertise, that's for sure. Yeah, some boy stuff. <laughs> Tools and such. 
and up oh, <laughs> those were some some magazines now this jewelry jar right here sold for ten dollars i don't know why i didn't bid on this that was dumb we would have had fun going through there but i think i know the woman who who um was selling that jar and i think she's a jewelry person if it's the person i think so i knew she was only going to put her junk in there there's a cool chicken <laughs> Oh, look at these great equestrian boots. I think they'll sold for a lot of money. Those are so nicely made. It's a nice array of stuff, that's for sure. Lots and lots of different stuff. Oh, I love those graphics on the box. Aren't those great? Cool mid-century lamp. Sorry, I'm kind of going too fast. I shut off the slow motion, so... <laughs> there's the abominable oh yes i loved those i actually forgot about those till just now i kind of did want to bid on those belt buckle things and yeah here's some more of those edison cylinders those are pre-flat records. Oh, there's the light blue one. Let me see if I pull it out. I've never seen that color before. Oh, man, someone's going to make a fortune on those, but I couldn't do it. And I think we're going to be coming upon some more jewelry here in a second. Those were interesting. Uh, they're like spice cans i think they were metal not in great condition but i thought those were kind of neat some more old baskets oh that was really cool that was a gigantic bowl i know those can be collectible some great old boxes like some medicine boxes look at all those skeleton keys These are interesting, I think. I didn't know what that book was. It didn't seem like there was anything else on. Yeah, it looked like. Uh, yeah, I wasn't sure what was going on with that. Anyway, Betsy McCall. That's a great doll. I've had that before. I've sold that on eBay more than once. That was a walker. I can't remember. She's Susie Walker. Uh, but she wound up. Let's see, we're going to be coming on to the up to the jewelry in a sec. There's some earrings, but let's take a look at this. I didn't stay to the bitter end of this auction, but I did stay a really long time. And when it started getting near the end, you know, as is what happens, people were leaving. So there weren't that many people left. And uh, I got this whole box for $10. So first of all, this is lovely. Isn't that nice? I also think these are pretty cool. I may have these or I may have had these. These are the comedy tragedy actors masks. And um, yeah, some of these I don't care about. They're not in good shape. I'm sure everybody knows that's the one I care about. Uh, I don't care about this. I don't care about this. But you, you I would like to marry. This is incredible. It is a bummer that it's missing that stone for sure. But let's take a look at the intricate work on this. So not only do you have those stones, first of all, I'd, I don't think I have ever seen a piece this old. This is probably from the 1910s, I would guess. I've never seen a piece this old with that color blue stone. You may have, I never have. But look at all these little like, like br brass little things there. Those all had to be hand applied, hand put put on or put in or however you say it. 
So this is a piece of jet. So let's take a look at how Wikipedia talks about jet. Of course, I'm just taking a little excerpt. If you want to read more about it, check out Wikipedia. Jet is the lowest rank of coal and is a gemstone. It is derived from wood that has changed under extreme pressure. Some people just call this fossilized wood. Of course, it comes from Whitby in the UK, which is in northern England. It's a little seaport town. And I don't think that you're allowed to take jet anymore out of Whitby. I think it's uh, some like conserved or something. So I don't think you can take that anymore. Um, and we're going to test for jet too. And I'm going to show you what that test looks like in a minute. So let's talk about how I knew this was jet. First of all, I collect Victorian jewelry, so I know jet pretty well. But let's take a look at some of the characteristics of jet. There are no seam lines. It is usually polished and shiny. It's lightweight. It's room temperature. It is somewhat easy to carve, although my understanding is when it gets particularly delicate and small, it can break easily, so you have to be skilled. And, of course, it's millions of years old. So let's take a look at that, too. Look at that tiny little carving. Isn't that gorgeous? So how we're going to test for jet is I'm going to get a little piece of unglazed ceramic and we're going to scrape it on there and there's going to be a little bit of a black mark. And that's going to absolutely confirm for us that this is indeed jet. I normally test for jet on a bigger piece, but this is, <laughs> this is the best I can do for today. So here is our unglazed ceramic right here. So we're just going to rub the back of this on uh, this unglazed part. I'm gonna try to be careful, of course. It's a delicate little thing and see what we get. See that? See that black? That's how we test for jet. I'll do it again. Did it leave a mark? Ooh, it did leave a mark. Yeah, I don't wanna do that again. Okay. Well, this is one of my favorite things. I absolutely love it. Do you? I certainly do. This may be a morning brooch, I don't think it is Victorian because of um, this, this right here. So uh, this, however, this is called a trombone clasp. The trombone clasp has been around since the mid, uh, mid 1800s, rather. I think the patent was applied for in 1850 or in the 1850s. So that's how this works. Isn't that nice? So, um, yeah. I am absolutely in love with this. I think the color of the stones are very unusual. I think the carving is lovely. I'm just going to have to try to find a stone like that. I sure hope that I'm going to be able to replace that. Here's hoping, right? I don't think those are real pearls, are they? I didn't even think about that. I'm thinking no. I'm thinking these are just glass. Hmm. Well, I'm going to have to look further into that. What a beautiful, beautiful item this is. I'm so excited. Here we are back at the auction. This was beautiful. The auctioneer said this was hand-painted silk. That was very pretty. And some interesting buttons. I think those are mini balls, right? Are those Civil War mini balls? That's what I think those are bullets, I think could be wrong. That was a cute Pinocchio, but he, he didn't have a nose, so that was problematic. Cute, though. Had some nice age on it, right? Yeah, just some sort of stuff not in great condition. I think those were old matchbooks, right? There's a gingerbread clock. These are markers, I think, for the cemetery. That said FLT on it. That stands for Odd Fellows. Those went for a bunch of money, I think. I love old photographs. These are very interesting. Check out these guys having fun. Look at that. Look at the guy playing fiddle. And these are photo postcards. I would love to hear what they're talking about. <laughs> Look at the guy dancing. That's great. I 
how fun. I think that one is a mirror image or, yeah, that doesn't look like one that somebody took, right? That looks like a pre-printed sort of professional thing. I love those. Old Mickey Mouse, not in great condition though. I think those are cigarette cards actually, I think. They also had some baseball players in them too. If those are the ones I'm thinking they are. Those went for a bunch of money, those doorknobs. Oh, these three bottles, how beautiful are those? Look at that. I loved him. I didn't have any use for him, but I, I think he sold for 20 bucks. Very fun. I think I have to stop the camera because I got a person here. So hold on, let me cut this out. Okay. I just cut out that little piece. I don't ever want to record people's faces. I don't know what that thing is. It's some sort of a rock. This is a beautiful Art Nouveau lamp. Yeah. Really interesting stuff. Those are a bunch of old music books. They didn't look like they were in good condition. Those pillows were fantastic. Look at those. Absolutely adorable. I think those may have been hand done. I was trying to figure that out. I think he's an odd fellow too from that fraternal organization. Look at those. What? Who would keep those, Ramses? <laughs> those are old. I guess people collect anything. I think those items were Civil War items. Those went for a bunch. And we're coming right down to the end here. Some old Life magazines. I think that whole stack sold for $5. Jarts. Oh, my Lord. Does anybody remember Jarts? Those are illegal in every state. Those were very dangerous, but super fun. I remember playing with those. They pulled off the market. Can't sell them on eBay either. Those went for like $100, believe it or not. Here's a, a great old violin. Of course, it has a Stradivarius inside. That's what they always say, but they never are. And I have one last thing. This really pretty necklace. So what I can tell right away is it's not old. It only looks like it's old. But I could tell it wasn't actually old. Now, I can't see what the mark is, but I can tell by the shape, that sort of um, football shape type thing there that I'm not going to be able to get in on, that this was a Judith Jack. And I really like Judith Jack jewelry. I was going to bid on it, but I wasn't sure when he was holding it, if that was it or not, because I was kind of in the back. And then he said, I would call this color chartreuse. So I'm like, well, that's not it. But I think it was it. I think he doesn't know what chartreuse is. <laughs> so I missed out. Well, that's it. Thanks a lot for joining me today at this auction. Let me know what you think. Please do all the YouTube -y things, like, and all of that jazz. And I will see you soon. Cheers, everybody. Okay, so my mom and I are both gonna attempt to take off some verdigris from two pieces. So I have some, some white vinegar right here. I'll put a little bit in there. And here we have water for rinsing. So mom, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you this to do. So we have verdigris, well you can see it, some there and there, I can do this on the plate. So what we're gonna do is you're going to take it with that paint brush and just put the vinegar, you know, try not to get it where it's not a verdigree because um, what will happen is it, the vinegar is a very strong acid. It might take off some of the gold tone. I mean, the verdigree itself does, that's for sure. Yeah, just make sure you put a, you know, make sure you put a bunch on there if you want. So I'll just attempt, I guess, to take off, uh, I guess I'll, we'll do this thing right here. Put a little bit of vinegar, uh, yeah, vinegar on that paintbrush. I feel like when it's on a brush, it's a little more controlled, you know, kind of thing. All right, you got yours on too. Yeah. 
So then we're gonna we're gonna scrub it with a toothbrush after it sits a bit. You know, it seems to be coming off. Some of it is coming off just with the brush, Sandy. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. If that yeah, acid's it is. really yes, good. Yes, it is. Yes, so it maybe is. what you can do is just wipe yours with a paper towel. Did you get the bottom of that stem too? I did. Huh. Wow, mm -hmm. would you look at that? Well, that's cool. Well, let yeah. it sit for a minute and let me get a, a paper towel. Yeah. Good, maybe we won't need to use uh, abrasives then. Yeah, this is coming right off too. Yeah, it is. All yeah, right, let is. me get some paper towels and we'll see. Okay, well maybe, maybe that's a good thing to not use the toothbrush, let me see. I, don't think it needs I didn't it. let that much time pass by on mine, but yeah, mine came off too very nicely. So very let's nicely. take a look at the, there's the verdigris white, there. White vinegar. Yep, white vinegar. Oops. So that piece is cleaned. I think it did take up maybe a little bit of the, no, maybe it didn't. But you can see, look, this needs a lot more work well, that I'll have to do. Here, so let's see. Let's see yours. We'll see here. Here was a bunch here. Yep. And, uh, and then on the bottom too, right? Oh, on there too. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. See how that came? Yep. That was that was green before. It's coming. Hmm. You probably can't. Maybe. Can't yeah. See you know what? This close, isn't but... really super thick. Oh yeah. no. See. Mm -hmm. Is that being more stubborn? No. Look. It came right off. Yep. That's awesome. Yes, it did. So verdigris will cause corrosion to the metal, and that's why it's important to take it off. And it will also spread. It will spread to your other pieces. Yeah, that looks really good. Well, that was pretty easy, and we didn't need to let uh, time pass. No, we didn't. Maybe it's better not to, like you say. It's Maybe, not happy. so it won't corrode. Well, sometimes I have to, because sometimes it's, like, super thick. All right, so I think you wanted to show everybody your purchase from the auction. <laughs> okay. Right? There you go. Yeah. Does he have a name? Henry. You named him Henry? <laughs> I love him. Me too. Hi, Henry. Cluck, cluck, cluck. Me too. He is super fine. Thank you. I love it. I love it. Can I tell him how much I paid? Yes. $12.50. No, what a bargain. Actually, I have to correct you. I oh, paid it. Yes, you did. <laughs> Let me Thank just you. see those eyes again. Thank you for the gift. Oh, hilarious. Where are you going to put this? I in have your living decided. Room? In the kitchen? <laughs> oh, Fantastic. I don't know. How cute. I know I had to have him. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> That's awesome. So I worked on this necklace for a few minutes, not very long, but you can see how beautifully that cleaned up. And it was very, very thick down there on the spring ring clasp. So that's that. And by the way, this is a, um, a shell cameo. I said that I thought it was stone, but that is not so. So you can see where there's a little bit of discoloration, not too bad but just a little bit from where the green was. But this cleaned up beautiful. I love it. Now it's really quite immaculate. And here's the other piece. This was really badly verdigreed in a couple of different spots. So that cleaned up nicely too. Oops, missed a little spot there. But here's the pin. The pin looks good too. Yeah, there's a little bit of the remnants, you know, but the verdigree is gone. This is a really cute piece, I think. You like this one? Yes, I do. Nice and old, right? Yes, I do. Probably like from it. the 30s on this one. I love it, it's too. Very pretty. 